I am now introducing Insane Ian. Achievement unlocked! Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian, I am a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and on this show I react to comedy music from the perspective of a comedy musician. Because that's what I am, and that's what I do, and that's what this is, and that's why you're here, and that's why this day... Not just this week, this day I am reacting to the brand new epic rap battles of history, Henry Ford versus Karl Marx. If this is your first time here, yes, I am a comedy musician, I react to comedy music because it's kind of where my field of expertise is. What that means for you is that I'm going to pause the video. Kind of a lot, actually. This way I'm not talking over jokes and missing them, but also so that I can discuss how the video works in tandem with the lyrics, how they work together to help amplify the jokes, hopefully. Sometimes uh, it's uh, talking about how the song is made and how they've worked jokes into things. Sometimes it's even explaining jokes, because that seems to be fun for everybody. And sometimes it's just me sitting there and laughing my damn head off. It's a crapshoot, whatever you're going to get, but I think it's a good time either way. If you like this sort of content, Please, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos, and if you really want to help the channel out, consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get to see these videos early, get my music and comedy early, and all sorts of other cool things like that. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's dive into today's video. Now, like I said, this is today's video. All of this week, I will be releasing a new video, uh, mostly because when this video came out and a bunch of other videos came out, I had my uh, wisdom teeth removed, and so I couldn't make reactions because I uh, face was puffy and a lot of pain, and it was it was a good time. Uh, so uh, this week is all catching up to that, kind of as a Christmas gift for all of you. Uh, and uh, you know, the videos I released the previous two weeks, those were pre-recorded because I knew I was having dental surgery. Uh, this is Henry Ford versus Karl Marx. I know very little about either of them. I know it's the industrialist versus the economist, the uh, the capitalist versus the socialist. Henry Ford is, you know, uh, known for the Ford Motor Company and also for being a horrible anti-Semite, which, by the way, ceasefire now, free Gaza, uh, but, uh, and free Palestine. But, uh, and Karl Marx, obviously the father of modern socialism, fought for workers' rights. There's a lot of strikes going on right now. <clears throat> Actually, the <clears throat> excuse me. There's a there's a some auto worker strikes going on too. So perhaps that may play into this, since Ford is known for his auto work and whatnot. Uh, but that is the extent of my knowledge uh, with with Karl Marx and uh, Henry Ford. Uh, you know, other than you know knowing Ford was a notorious anti-Semite, uh, published things about his anti-Semitism. That's that's going too far. But anyway, let's dive into this, see what this is all about. I already said let's dive into this, and then spoke more. It happens. Sorry, not sorry. Whatever, here we go. Okay. Already from the start, uh, I'm loving the beat. Not expecting that voice uh, out of uh, out of Nice Peter, but I mean it's Nice Peter's voice. But I thought he was going to do a character voice. Well, maybe we didn't know what Henry Ford sounded like, or maybe he's just not going to try for an impression. Uh, love the beard on Epic Lloyd. That was looking great. Uh, my lines are production. Your lines are bread. That's a great line. I mean, yes, uh, Ford uh, pioneered the production line assembly or assembly line production. That's what I meant, assembly line production. That's the other thing that I knew that I meant to say in the intro and didn't. That's the only other thing about Ford I know. And of course, yeah, the bread lines, uh, common socialist uh, thing. Uh, well, I mean, it's it, not a thing of socialism, but it's what people associate with so socialism. Not really a thing. Um, but, uh, you know, you're thinking more the, the bread lines in Russia, you know, especially of that particular era. Um, but, uh, yeah, not, not so much a thing nowadays. This is time, this is how I got my start now. Me tear your ideology apart. You... Oh, this should be good. Tearing, tearing his ideology apart. That, mm, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um. Mr. Motor City needs some medicine. Red. My lines are a production. Your lines are red. This is Evelyn Tommy. 
also to go back because I went back, uh, the menace in red, the red menace, that was a kind of a, a big thing in uh, early, you know, the, the 1940s and 50s, actually even a little bit before that is, you know, the medicine red thinking that, that people were red or socialists. Um, you know, the red scare, the red menace was kind of a big thing. Uh, communism, socialism. Uh, communism was just a red herring. I'm a big fan of Clue and that line is always in my head. Um, but, uh, you know, it, the red menace was commun communism and socialism and everything. There's there's a whole thing of uh, in in clue about you know we we had we, uh, Tim Curry loses his wife because her friends were socialists. Hmm, horror. Taking it back to the beginning again. Free the glass slaves, lose your chain, trade them in for mass graves. Now it's stop it. Wow, we're calling rounds of body gang. When a world leader likes you, that's a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a lot to unpack there that that I'm gonna need to rewind to, to catch all of because I one of the reasons I pause all the time is because I have terrible ADD and uh, you know if I want to jump in and say something right away and if I let it all play out I'm gonna forget what I was gonna say before kind of like I did now, which is why I was stalling with that bit about ADD. Um, uh, the first thing, you know, I, I, uh, going back to a line that we previously heard, uh, figured out a disassembling timepieces, now watch me tear your ideology apart, because he looks at his wrist. Timepieces, watches, obviously. Um, take it back a little here. Disassembly. This 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 is I got my stuff now. Watch me tear your ideology apart. You scream, unite the workers, free the glass slave. That was the kind of uh, tenets of uh, the, the socialist movement and, and working, you know, for the, the working class people, uh, you know, for workers' rights and such. Lose your chain, trade them in for mass graves. Mao and Stalin. Wow, we'll call Mao's body when... Yeah, so Mao and Stalin uh, did... Uh, base their ideologies on Marxism, uh, from what I understand. When a world leader the likes world you, leader likes you that's, a that's a red flag. Both Mao and Stalin uh, are from countries with red flags. That's simple. That That's a, a simple line. Uh, different places, but same color flags, at least. Red flag. Produce with my two hands, you're a destitute trans. Scheme to trade bootstraps in for food stands. Any person tries to seize my private property, will get to draw grants to his private pot properly. <laughs> Alright, that's a very nice Peter style line. Um tries to touch my private properly will receive a wrench to his private parts properly. Uh like, I, I've heard him say lines like that before, and I don't know if that's a line that, that he himself wrote, or if it's, like, you know, the kind of alliterative wordplay that Zach Sherwin does, because I know Zach does a lot of the writing on these. Um, uh, but I've heard him deliver a line very similar to that, so it makes me think that it may be a nice Peter line, but still, that's, that's a very funny line. Who takes advice from a broke fly? It's laughable. I wouldn't wet my tailpipe with your dice crap at all. Okay, Das Capital, I think, is a Karl Marx book. Maybe. Mm, I don't know. You'd save the penny for his daughter you named Jenny. You might not have needed to bury quite so many. Who's that? Okay. Uh, there's a thing I don't understand. I'm guessing, from context clues, because that's how you learn things, kids, uh, is that uh, Karl Marx had quite a lot of children, many of which were named Jenny, that died. It was kind of in the era, sometimes kids did not live the parents because of illnesses and other such things that they could not solve. I love how every shot of Marx is in, Marx is in, I said Marx, because Carl and Marx became a portmanteau in my mouth. Uh, Marx is in black and white in every time, in every shot here. Um, I, I dig that kind of commitment to uh, eras and craft when they do these videos for, for ERB. ERB, 
uh, out of a lot of things uh, going on, always has just top-notch video production uh, for any of their battles, and especially when they have battles of people from completely opposing eras, color and black and white, and they have them meet in the middle and sometimes do a crossfire of the, being split but among those colors is fantastic. But Marx's verse is about to begin, so let's roll it back a little bit here. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a great bar. Um, loving the accent uh, uh, Epic Lloyd is using here. And also, uh, right after I'm talking about the color versus black and white and where he's imitating a photo of, of Marx, just sitting in the same pose, it, it fades into color, but it's like, it's very, like, technicolor color. It's like, it's been black and white, but colorized. It's not just, here we've, you know, turned off the black and white filter on Photoshop, or, or whatever editing program you're using. No, this is actually, it, it gives the appearance of the colorization process that they used to do with old movies uh, back on Turner, on, 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 TBS and, and Turner Classic Movies and stuff, when Ted Turner would colorize old black and white movies. Um, I, I thought uh, Marx was, I mean, he's Prussian, uh, which he, he was, but he was born on the, like, the Germany-owned, or Germany-adjacent area of Prussia, uh, and I always think Prussian is Russian in my head, because they rhyme, and that makes sense in my brain. I'm terrible with geography, kids. Um, I've said this in videos before, uh, so I don't know exactly where Prussia is. I know it's, I thought he was uh, German, but the voice, the accent here is a little Russian, is what I'm saying, so maybe he's both. Meh. I know a lot of Russian uh, dictators and leaders have used Karl Marx's uh, ideology for a lot of their campaigns. I know that they, a lot of people uh, love Marx and emulate uh, that for their campaigns in Russia but I don't know further beyond that. When it's an actual history ERB, it kind of, basically I'm learning things from the ERB because I didn't in school, uh, in one ear, out the other. Uh, if it wasn't pop culture, I didn't know it. Uh, that's the way my dumb head makes happen with stuff. I can't even words. Um, so yeah, it's, you're, this is gonna be not as, analytical as some other reactors right now because I'm focusing more on the comedy element of it and not really the historical facts, although I have been pointing out a few historical facts that I might have maybe known in the back of my brain. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a great screenshot. Yeah, that's good. Take it back a little more than that. Okay, I there's there's something about when Lloyd does an accent, and it's kind of a, a gruffer voice. Like he he, we know he does or he did. Uh, Dis rhymes for hire, which were great. They're all fantastic, but like there's something when he gets that rough affectation in his voice that his bars come out even more bitter and more biting, and uh, like just you didn't read shit in that gruff voice hits so much harder. Absolutely love that. Uh, you'd know that it didn't cause mass graves. That's what yeah. What what is exactly the line? Greed did. Yeah, obviously. He's going to say that to the, you know, capitalist. Because uh, he was an economist. He, you, the, lots of, you read Wikipedia on the difference. I'm not going to try to attempt to define them. Also, uh, didn't know Ford got name dropped in, in Mein Kampf. That's uh, not a thing. Well, I mean, it's probably with the anti Semitism, probably, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, sure, okay. Okay. 
uh, going back a little bit, uh, your your rags to riches story is dung from a Taurus. There is a card called a Ford Taurus, um, but also Taurus is. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to say what word, because I'm not sure what word, but it also means bull. A Taurus is a type of bull. Uh, it's another word for bull in another language. I'm not sure what language, because brain can't words, um, but it is. So for Taurus, dung from a Taurus, it's bullshit is what he's saying. Sorry. Uh, went too far back after I had already gone back. Self-made man, not rags to riches story. Uh, misquoted the lyric I had only heard once. Um, your your <laughs> daddy's two hands. Not you built this company with your two hands. Your daddy's two hands gave you a free farm and a forest. It's like it's like everybody who's saying, oh, well, these all these millennials, they can never. Uh, save up to buy a house. You know, I, I had this trick for saving money. I didn't buy any of the coffee or the avocado toast sandwiches, and I was able to buy a home for me and my wife because my parents gave me a loan of $400,000. That's that's not you pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. That's you you being basically a Napo baby and having your parents pay it for for you. No. 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 Cutting to a, a a projected image of Marx to say that why you let you know spied on them like Big Brother the cameras everywhere kind of concept uh, that's great I hope the seventh kid of or, or seventh brother of uh, Henry Ford did not literally murder his mother, died in childbirth. I mean, I don't hope that they died in childbirth either, but oh, between the two options, I hope it was death and childbirth and not actual murder, but we're not being clear in rhyming lyrics here, so. Yeah. <laughs> Model T is the first automobile that Ford made. Uh, it's one of the first automobiles ever. Um, Model T, total like a and I just caught the inner bar in there. The Model T total. Total lack of style is killing me. Model T total lack of style. But a teetotaler is a person who does not drink. And from what I understand, Henry Ford was a non-drinker. Uh, very much avoided the liquor and was, you know, very vocal about that. You know, I don't drink either, but yeah, whatever. Uh, but yeah, the the Model T total lack of skill teetotaler. That's why fitting that in there. That's a good bar. We can't take shit on you according to ability. Not quite catching that. I don't. I don't know the meaning on that one. Brazil nuts, sure. Yeah, look at look at the comparison here between the the. I mean, is it maybe just the makeup that makes him look a little bit darker, a little bit not really flesh toned there, um, between Marx and and Ford, or is it like the weird colorization of him? Because that's, that's the impression that I'm getting, is the weird colorization rather than just being the makeup tone. Like, the, the, the jacket is, is still kind of like that, that weird color, too. So, I mean, it's, it's a blue, but it doesn't look like a blue jacket, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but, yeah, that's some great bars. Uh, once again, Lloyd's freaking killing it out of the gate here. I was want to say, yeah, the Model T only could go forward. Could there was no reverse uh, gear shift? If you wanted to go backwards, you pushed it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's you know, it's just the thing. Okay, okay, not a bad, not a bad uh, jab, but again, that's that's a jab on personal appearance rather than. 
uh, abilities or or uh, ideologies. So that's that's it's always funny in like a schoolyard kind of way when ERB drops to the physical jabs because um, it's like the dozens, you know. So. It's not an ERB without a dick joke. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, I'm throwing you for loops like the F in my logo because the F in Ford is kind of very calligraphy-esque, not quite cursive, but, you know, you, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, that's that's the second read this in high school book they've mentioned right now, uh, Big Brother coming from 1984 and now Animal Farm. Uh, yeah, that's uh, again high school where I should have learned about Henry Ford and Karl Marx and probably did, but uh, retained it. I did not. Cranking out four severed fingers a week. Yes, factory work, uh, because of the assembly line production, uh, there were a lot of accidents happening with that and people losing digits. And uh, apparently happening so often that uh, seven f severed, or, or well, how many severed fingers did he say? Four severed fingers a week. And a work week being five days, four injuries per week. Uh, it's rough. Okay, uh, but good jab. That's what I'm talking about. Workers' rights. Um, yeah, that's... That's what Karl Marx uh, is very well known for. Uh, you know, the strikes and workers and, oh, you controlling what they eat, drink, and do, you know, uh, on your company time. You're only supposed to work for the company, and yet the com workers should be working for themselves, not for the company. It's the kind of thing that I caught in a cursory glance at Wikipedia, um, and tried to act like I know what I'm talking about. It, it, it's what I'm working with what I can here. <laughs> yes, uh, he says in the opening, Ford says, Mr. Motor City, that's Detroit. Um, a lot of, I mean, Detroit is known as Motor City because a lot of car manufacturing plants are there in Detroit and Lose Yourself, Eminem's Oscar Award winning song from uh, 8 Mile. 8 Mile takes place in Detroit. Eminem's from Detroit. Lose Yourself is a song about Eminem's life, kind of. It's kind of a biopic, but fictionalized in Detroit. Uh, and uh, Detroit is among the Great Lakes states. Great Lakes states, because Detroit is in Michigan. Um, yeah, I know some geography in the U.S. Only because I live in Illinois now. Whatever. Ooh, hell of a burn. That is, that is probably my favorite bar in the song so far. You are worse for Michigan than Flint's water pipes, which still haven't been fixed, from what I understand. So that's pretty damn brutal. Uh, I, that's a good line. That's a good line. Uh, you cracked the bottom press and only me impressed. You're not hot, Carl. That's just shit on your chest. Holy shit. Holy shit, they pulled a hot Carl joke. Oh my god. Uh... <laughs> Alright, this this is kind of going a little bit back. Hot, Car a hot Carl is a shit on your chest. Uh, some people call that a Cleveland steamer as well. Um, why do I know this? Because in college, I had two different bands that were named after gross sexual acts. Uh, there was, first it was Hot Carl and Dirty Sanchez. Um, I was Hot Carl, and my friend was Dirty Sanchez. Uh, and, uh, and then there was a band called the Arabian Goggles. 
Uh, and all of these were offshoots from another band that I was in called Pudding Capacity. Um, but uh, <laughs> they were they were like they were like alternate versions of Pudding Capacity. So yeah, they were all named after horribly gross sex acts that we found online. Um, and so yes. Uh, also, there's a there's a President of the United States of America song called Hot Carl, and it's just them saying Hot Carl and over and over and again. Um, but uh, yeah, that's. Karl Marx, hot Karl. That's not hot Karl. That's just shit on your chest. It's it's juvenile, but I I thought it was funny. Hi. Uh, you cracked the bottom pressure, don't leave me impressed. You're not hot Karl, that's just shit on your chest. But from Amanda State West, you got an awful lot to say. I'll pay you five dollars a day to go away. Money ain't gonna pay. Close with the textile bill. I guess the capitalists are cool when they're paying your bills. Ooh, okay, now that's a good line from Ford against Marx there. I guess the capitalists are okay when they're paying your bills. All right. He's gotten a good couple hits in. This is the first time, uh, not the first time, but this is the first time in a while that I can remember an ERB going to a third verse. The second verse from each of them was shorter, um, but they're going to a third verse here. Um, and, and that is the best line Ford has done so far. Uh, that said, Marx is still taking this away from me. Okay, again, going on the bathing thing. That's, that's... <laughs> Step off your soapbox, take your soap with you. Well, whatever. All right. Wow. Wow. Just having him explain his... That's the thing that's happened with every single time. Uh, Ford does a bar that he thinks is biting against uh, Marx, and then Marx comes back and not only hits him with verses, but explains away how the verses that Ford did aren't don't mean what they're supposed to mean. Yeah, no, it's... it's it, Greasing the wheels of communism is what these... They, you know, it was like more of like a donation than a payment, and... He also does he explain they weren't you know they weren't mass graves that was what the greed did the greed filled the graves not my ideologies explaining back to him the bar the barbs that he tried to throw at him that's great. What was that about Edsel? Edsel's stomach cancer showed more love than you did. Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> As switch side. Ho. Oh, that's a great line. Auschwitz, uh place in Germany, uh, associated with horrible things, uh, as which side you are on, as which, Auschwitz, it's a great, it's a great verbal pun flip, it's great. That's what a lot of people say Ford stands for, found on road dead, F-O-R-D, that was fantastic, holy shit. Uh, Marx walked away with that plainly. Uh, we currently have two new rap battles in production. We wanted you to help us decide on another matchup for us to do next. Here are five ideas we really like. Please vote for your favorite. Tom Brady versus Diego Maradona. I don't know who that is. Uh, Margaret Thatcher versus Otto von Bismarck. Vincent Van Gogh versus Andy Warhol. That one would be pretty cool. Karl Marx versus Henry Ford is the one that won, and P.T. Barnum versus Vince McMahon. Ooh, that one could be cool. P.T. Barnum versus Vince McMahon. Um, I like the artist one too, Vincent Van Gogh versus Andy Warhol. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was killer. I really enjoyed that. Let's see. Always love those. What's entering the atmosphere? Oh! 
Whoa, we just saw a couple clips there. Godzilla was among them and a couple other things here. So that's Godzilla approaching. That's the shot from Risky Business when Tom Cruise comes sliding in. So Godzilla, Risky Business, Mission Impossible. That's the shot uh, where Tom Cruise comes down on uh, the strings in the first Mission Impossible movie. And that's four buses, at, like Evil Knievel. Is it going to be Evil Knievel versus Tom Cruise? Because both are stunt related. Tom Cruise is doing a lot of his own stunts. Um, yeah, that's all that that is. Uh, anyway, that's freaking great. If it's Evil Knievel versus uh, Tom Cruise, that's going to be amazing. Uh, because, you know, Evil Knievel was a stunt driver, and Tom Cruise is a Scientology guy who is now doing his own stunts and broke his ankle in not the last Mission Impossible, but the one before it, jumping across to a roof. Uh, but anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please, of course, like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. And if you really want to help the channel out, consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get to see these videos early, get my music and comedy early, and all sorts of other cool things like that. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Hans Gruber. Hostages are taken